Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from CNC 3D. So today we're going to be going through how to surface your spoil board on your machine and how to use the surfacing wizard within CNC 3D Commander. So we've just got one of our QB2 CNC machines out on our factory. It's currently connected up to our local Wi-Fi network here on this IP address. So the first step is for you to actually connect up to your machine. Now, if you are running on Bluetooth or on USB, then you can just connect to it using this COM option here and choose the appropriate COM port for your actual machine. But for this video, we're going to connect to one of our QB2s, which is currently on our network. So let's just connect up to it here. And the first thing that we want to do is go into the spoil board surfacing wizard. So if we click on the create button at the top here, you'll see that the top left hand link is for the spoil board surfacing wizard. So let's just click on that. I'll just bring this into view here. Now we have got some basic instructions on the left hand side here of exactly what to do to generate your surfacing job. So we're going to go through some of the options that you can choose from. So the first one here is the cutter diameter. So it's a good idea just to double check exactly what your cutter diameter is. In this case, it's one of our 22 mil surfacing bits that we do provide with our machines for the purposes of surfacing your spoil board. Now the next option under here is the step over. So the step over is how far we will move forward or advance forward in a particular axis in order to make sure that we do overlap where we were previously. So 40% is a pretty good all round number. We're just gonna stick with this 40% value. Now the QB2 is quite a serious machine. So the depth of cut relates to how deep it's going to actually be doing that pass. So 0.5 would probably be better for a UCARV CNC, but for our QB2, we're gonna do a full one millimeter pass for the actual surfacing wizard. Now under here, you've got your plunge rate. This is currently set to 200. The 22 mil cutter is quite a large cutter. So we're gonna keep this plunge rate kind of slow. So we just wanted to just gingerly go into the material up to that one millimeter depth, and then it can start going at the normal feed rate that it will travel through the material at. So we can just leave this here as a thousand millimeters from now. And underneath here, this seems to be one of the most confusing sections is the width and the length. Now, in order for you to do your entire spoil board, the ideal way to do it is to basically home your machine and then lower your bit down onto the surface of your material and then start running your job. But what we need to actually work out is the maximum size that you can actually do the job at. So you'll notice we've got this max size button over on the side here, and there's a little help button to explain exactly what this button will do. So this essentially explains that we need to factor in for the fact that when you home your machine, it will touch off the limit switches and then it will back off a particular pulling distance or, or a pull off distance. And so what we will actually do if you hit the max size button is we will actually perfectly work out exactly how far you can travel to avoid you from hitting typical soft limit issues. This is part of the reason why we do ask you to connect up to your machine first so that we can actually obtain your maximum travel limits from your machine. So let's just go ahead here and click on max size. Now this has automatically done the mathematical calculations required to ensure that you're gonna be able to maximize your surfacing area without running into any soft limits at all. So underneath here, you'll notice we do have this spindle RPM option. This option is only really available for machines that do have a spindle that will automatically start. If you've got a UCARV or a Queen Bee or a QB2, then you do require to turn the spindle on using the actual VFD or turning the switch on on your trimmer router on your UCARV. So we won't be using this function here today. And now all we need to do that we've gone in and filled all of these fields in here is just click on generate. Now, by default, it will save it with spoil board job and it will tell you what the diameter is of your actual cutter. And we'll just hit save on this one. 
Now that we've gone ahead and saved that, we're just going to close out of the wizard and then close out of the creation tools. And basically, we're going to follow the normal procedure that you would do for uploading a job onto your Nighthawk over Wi-Fi. If you are on Bluetooth, then you will just need to go through the standard load job function at the top here and run it like you would any other normal job. But because we are on Wi-Fi, we're going to be going into upload job here. We're going to choose our spoil board job from this list and then click on open. So that has now successfully uploaded onto our Nighthawk. And if we take a look through the list of jobs here, we should actually find the job sitting here in the list. So there it is there, spoil board job, 22 millimeter diameter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our machine and we're actually going to go ahead and surface this bed. So let's go and do that now. All right, so what we're going to be doing, we've just gone ahead and we've installed our 22 mil surfacing bit into our machine and we've just gone ahead and honed our machine. So basically we're in the home position here. So to do that in Commander, we just have to hit the home machine button and that should take it to the front left hand corner of your machine, depending on the orientation that you have it configured to home to. Once we're in the home position, what we can do is we can grab a permanent marker and we're just gonna put some lines all over our bed just so we can see exactly which sections of the bed have actually been surfaced. So let's go do that now. So now that we've gone ahead and we've put some markings down on our bed, it's a good idea for us to just lower our end mill all the way onto the surface of our spoiler board. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now that we're getting close, we're just going to reduce our distance down to one millimeter. And we're going to use a piece of paper to actually go ahead and make sure that we're just brushing up along the bottom of the machine. You can also choose to use your probe in order to more accurately set the surface of the material, but we're just going to use a bit of paper for those of you out there that don't actually have a probe. And so now we definitely have our surfacing tool directly on our bed, which means we're pretty much good to go ahead now and essentially start this job. So first thing we'll do is we're just gonna attach our dust shoe on here. If you don't have a dust shoe, that's perfectly fine, but just keep in mind that when you do have an MBF spool board, you might get quite a lot of dust that's generated and having a good dust shoe on there will actually be very, very beneficial for you rather than spreading all of the uh, sort of powderish wharf that MDF produces all over your workshop. And then now all we need to do is basically turn on our spindle and wait for it to get up to speed. A few minutes later.
And there we go, guys. We've just gone through here and surfaced our bed. By the looks of it, we have gone through all of the pen markings that we put down on the surface, which means that our entire work area has now been machined nice and flat and perpendicular to our tool. So we should be good to go ahead and put down some material and get consistent depths of cut through anything that we do choose to cut out on this machine. If you do notice that you haven't surfaced the entire bed after doing this process once, then simply repeat this process again at the new surface depth that we have created. And eventually you will get all the way through the entire surface and then you should have a beautiful bed in order for you to do your jobs on. Thank you for watching this video and we would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to our channel and we'll continue to make some awesome new content for you in the future. Thanks guys, have a wonderful day.